What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a simple alarm system based on motion detection in Python and before we get into the code I want to show you a little demonstration of what we're going to end up with. Alright so for this demonstration I had to turn off my camera in OBS so that I can use it in Python and this is what we're going to end up with. Right now you can see this is just a simple GUI showing what my camera sees. The alarm system is not turned on yet. I can do that in my case by pressing the T key on my keyboard and this is going to uh, only show the differences. So we're going to see a black and white visualization, black being every pixel that stays the same and white being the change. And when too much changes, the motion detection system will notice that something is wrong. It's going to give us an alarm, which is quite loud. So maybe you want to turn down the volume a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how loud it's going to be in the video, but when I now press T, you see everything is black. Since I'm talking, we see a little bit of white, but if I start moving around, you can hear the alarm and I can stop it by pressing T again. Um, this basically deactivates the alarm system and I can activate it again by pressing T. Now I'm not moving, no alarm, but if I move, there you go. We get the alarm again and this can be used in a couple of different uh, circumstances. You can monitor your room, you can monitor some street, of course do it legally, don't film any areas that you're not allowed to film, but um, this is how, uh, this is what we're going to build in today's video. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install two external Python modules that we're going to need for this project today. The first one being OpenCV, which is the go-to library for computer vision. And the second one is Immutils, which we're going to use for some minor manipulation of the frames like resizing. And in order to install these two modules, we're going to open up the command line and we're going to say pip install OpenCV-Python and also Immutils. So once we have that, we're going to import them in Python by saying import CV2. This is OpenCV. You import OpenCV Python by importing CV2. And we also import immutils. In addition to that, we also import two core Python modules. The first one being threading, which we're going to need because we need to run multiple threads to handle the displaying of um, the changes, the displaying of the camera data and the alarm at the same time. Um, and also we're going to import wind sound, which is something that is probably only available on Windows. So if you're working on Linux or Mac, you have to find a library to make some sound yourself. However, you don't have to make sound. You can decide whatever happens in the case of an alarm. You can print it. You can um, make some sound. You can send an email. You can send an SMS. It doesn't really matter. You can decide whatever happens when you call that alarm function. Uh, the main project is everything around that. How do you recognize an alarm and what you do in the case of an alarm is up to you. So once we have these libraries, we're going to start by setting up, uh, setting up the camera. So we're going to say cap for capture equals CV2 video capture. Zero if you have only one camera and you can choose a number zero, one, two, three if you have multiple cameras. So you're going to uh, choose the respective camera by specifying the respective index. Once we have that, we're going to say cap dot set cv2 cap underscore prop underscore frame width is going to be 640. You can change that if you want to. And the height for the height I'm going to use 480. And then we're going to get a starting frame. So the basic idea of our motion detection system will be to get a frame and then to compare it to the next frame to calculate the differences. And if the differences are high enough, because you can always have some minor differences for no reason, maybe if you know you have some glitch or something, you might have some differences. But if you have enough differences to say this is motion, we're going to cause an alarm. So we're going to say um, unnamed return value and the start frame is going to be equal to cap.read. This basically gets from the camera uh, a return value which we won't use which is why we name this underscore and then the frame which is going to, re to be returned by the camera. And then what we do is we say start frame is going to be equal to immutils resize. We're going to resize the start frame to have a, um, a size of 500. This is just something that we decide to do. Actually it's not size, sorry, it's width. We're going to scale this to a width of 500 so that we have a standardized format and then we're going to say also start frame equals cv2 convert color and we're going to convert this frame from color bgr blue green red to gray so we're going to make it black and white essentially because for the differences we don't really care about colors we care about movement and because of that 
um, we will exclude the colors, we will convert BGR to grayscale, and then we're going to say, we're going to smoothen the image by saying smart, uh, start frame equals CV2. We're going to use a Gaussian blur on the image. We're going to pass 21, 21 here as the size, and we're going to press uh, pass zero here, which I think was a deviation uh, or something like that. So we don't want to have a, de a deviation. And then what we do is we set basically the alarm parameters. We say alarm is false by default. Uh, by default, this is basically the variable that is going to indicate is an alarm active right now. Then we're going to have another one alarm mode, which is going to say, okay, do we want to look for an alarm? Because in the beginning, we don't uh, cause an alarm for movement only when we press T to toggle the alarm. Uh, we're going to say this is false by default. And then we're also going to say alarm counter, we're going to have this being zero. And this is going to be important um, to basically say how long do we want to have movement in order to cause an alarm. So this is going to be our counter. And then we're going to define a simple function that is going to be called when we have an alarm. In my case, I'm going to call this beep alarm. Again, in this function, you can do whatever you want, whatever you want to happen when an alarm uh, occurs is going to be in that function. So in this function, you can say, okay, send an email to me or upload a file to FTP, log something, do something, um, turn off some system, whatever you want to do is going to happen in that function. This is the function that we're going to call once an alarm happens. And in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say global alarm so that I can change this value inside of the function. And I'm going to say four, and then I'm going to make a loop that runs five times. If not, um, alarm mode. Um, we're going to break out of that. So if we this is important, because we're going to only cause the function if we are in alarm mode, but we also want to be able to terminate the alarm once we get out of alarm mode. So if an alarm is running, and I press T, I want to terminate that alarm so that it doesn't keep going, even though I'm no longer in alarm mode, which is why we have this condition here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say otherwise, if um, if we are in alarm mode, so if we don't break out of the loop, we're going to print in this case alarm. And I'm going to also cause a beep sound by saying wind sound dot beep. Uh, the frequency is going to be 2500. And we're going to have one second, so a 1000 milliseconds. And I'm going to set the alarm to false in the end. The basic logic behind that function is that when an alar alarm is caused, we don't want to just produce one beep. When an alarm is triggered, we want to produce five consecutive one second beeps. And then if alarm is no longer if the alarm is no longer active, we're gonna um, stop. But the point is, if we have an alarm, and the alarm stops immediately, we still want to have five seconds of beep so that we can have a solid alarm, basically. And if of course, the alarm continues, we're going to have more and more and more beeps all the time. Uh, that's the basic idea. And now we're going to have the main loop, which is going to be while true, we're going to say that the return value that we won't care about, and the frame is going to be cap dot read again, we're going to say again, the frame is going to be immutils dot resize, we're going to resize the frame, we're going to give it a width of 500. And of course, we don't want to have that in parentheses here. So that is going to be the resizing. And then we're going to say if we are currently in alarm mode, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to calculate the differences in order to determine whether we have an alarm or not. And how are we going to do this? We're going to first say the frame in black and white frame BW is going to be equal to CV2 convert color. And we're going to say this is going to be the frame and we're going to say CV2 color underscore BGR to gray. And we're going to say now, again, it's equal to CV2 Gaussian blur. And we're going to say the frame W, we're going to pass a size of let's say five, five. Um, and the sigma x deviation is going to be zero. And then we're going to say the difference, we're going to calculate the difference between this frame and the initial start frame. So the frame that we uh, defined up here, and we're going to say that this is CV2 dot apps diff. So absolute difference between the frame we have right now, frame BW and the starting frame. That is the idea. Um, that is the difference. And now what we say is we want a threshold. So thresholding basically means you have all sorts of grayscale pixels, you know, uh, having a lightness of 
20, of 26, of whatever, we want to have either 255 or zero. And with thresholding, we can do that. We define a threshold. Everything that's above that threshold will be 255. So it's going to be white. Everything that's below that threshold will be zero so that we only have two values to care about um, or to care for. And then we're going uh, and in order to do that, we say CB2 threshold and we get the difference as an input here. We say everything that's above 25. So every activation above 25 will be set to 255. Everything below that will be set to zero. And we're going to say that the method we use here is CB2 thresh binary. And from that, we want to get only the values. So we're going to get from the array that is returned from the list that is returned, we're going to get um, the second element, which is going to have the individual values. So zeros and ones, uh, or maybe zeros and 255 fives, I'm not sure. And then we're going to say the start frame that we had up until now is going to be now this frame so that for the next iteration, this is going to be the frame to calculate the difference uh, between or two. Um, and now the actual check is we take that result, we take that threshold, uh, threshold difference, and we calculate the sum of it, and we define um, a value that we want to to look for. So we say if threshold dot sum, and we want this value to be above a certain value. So I choose 300 here, which is quite a good, um, quite a good limit, I think, but you can, of course, also increase or decrease that the, the smaller the number is here, the more sensitive your movement detection will be. So if you put this to 10 or something, the slightest movement will cause an alarm. If you put this to I don't know, a 1000, probably it will be more resistant, it will accept more, it will be more tolerant to movement, it won't cause an alarm just because of a minor movement, we can play around with that value here later on, I'm going to set this to 300. Now, which is also the value that I used in the uh, preview. And if this is the case, we're going to say alarm counter plus equals one. And then we say else if that is not the case, we're going to say if the alarm counter is greater than zero, we're going to increase it. So we're going to say alarm counter minus negative one, the basic idea here being that we essentially increase the alarm every time we see a threshold over 300. And we decrease it every time we don't see it so that if we see some movement and you want we want to increase the alarm counter, um, we don't necessarily immediately want to cause an alarm, but only after a certain number of alarm counter increases. And if for long enough before causing an alarm, we don't see movement, we want to reset that we want to decrease it again, so that we don't have a problem here. And this is why we decrease the alarm or alarm counter by one, if we don't see enough movement. Um, and what we're going to do in this case, in the case of the alarm mode being active is we're going to say CV2 im show, we're going to show the actual black and white image, we're going to say the title here is cam, and we're going to uh, show the threshold image. Otherwise, if we're not in alarm mode, we're not going to check for all these differences, we're just going to show CV2, we're, going to, we're just going to show the normal image without any checks. So we're going to show the frame without anything, basically. And now if the alarm counter is above 20, we're going to say if the alarm is not active already. So if we don't have an alarm, we're going to say alarm is going to be equal to true. And we're going to say threading threat target is going to be the beep alarm function, we're going to start this function and cause an alarm. And in all cases, we're going to ask for a uh, for a key press, or we're going to listen for key presses, we're going to say key pressed is equal to CV two wait key, we're going to delay 30. So this is I think 30 FPS. Um, and we're going to say if the key pressed is equal to or T. So if the key that we press is the key T on the keyboard, this is going to toggle the alarm mode, we're going to say alarm mode is going to be equal to not alarm mode. So the opposite of what it is right now, and we're going to say alarm counter will be reset to zero. In all cases, which makes sense, right? When we toggle, we want to have a fresh start. And otherwise, if the key pressed is equal to or Q for quit, we're going to say alarm mode equals false to break the loop. And then we're going to say break uh, to go out of this while true. And then in the end, we're going to say cap release and CV to destroy all windows. And that is basically the script. Now I'm going to run this here once I turn off my OBS camera. But that is the code maybe 
Uh, I'm gonna go through it one more time. We create a camera, we set the resolution, we create an initial starting frame, we turn it into black and white, we smoothen it with a Gaussian blur, we define the alarm parameters, we have our function that is triggered when an alarm occurs. Here again, we take a new, uh, a new frame with each iteration, we resize it as well, we convert it to, uh, to grayscale if we have the alarm mode active and we also smoothen it and calculate the difference between this frame and the previous frame. If the difference is significant, we increase the alarm counter, otherwise we decrease it unless it's zero already. Um, and then um, if we have enough instances where we had enough movement, we're going to cause an alarm. And that's the basic idea. We can toggle it, we can enable it and disable it. So now we're going to move on to the demonstration again. Now I forgot one little thing that we need to add here when defining the video capture, we wanna add also CV2 cap underscore D show in order to get this to start properly and then it should work. All right, so let's start this now and see if it's going to work. And seems like at least the basic application is able to start. So now we're going to go again into alarm mode by pressing T and again, a warning, it's going to cause a pretty loud beep sound provided that it works. So I'm gonna trigger it now. I'm not gonna move now, I'm just gonna talk a little bit and this should not cause an alarm. But if I start moving, you can see the alarm is being caused, I can stop it by pressing T, I can go into it again, move a bit, there you go, alarm. So this works, we can now also tweak the threshold a little bit, not the threshold that we use in the threshold function, but the threshold that we use for the alarm counter. So here we can change this number to something like a 1000 and see what motion is necessary to trigger an alarm now. Um, so let's go. Okay, this already triggers an alarm. I think we need way more than that. Uh, maybe 10,000. Let's see. Okay, this also triggers an alarm. So maybe let's increase it to 100,000. This also triggers an alarm. Okay, so let me just print the threshold sum to see what the threshold value actually is in every iteration so that we can choose a nice value that is a little bit more tolerant. Okay, so you can see we have, oh, this is actually quite a high value, okay. So maybe we need to go more into the direction of a million or 10 million or something. So let's try this, this threshold here. So now if I move, this is, this is actually already, what is it? This is already more than a million. So it should cause an alarm. There you go. Okay. So I can move, if I move massively, you can see it causes an alarm. So that's probably what you want to tweak something above a million will be more tolerant. However, maybe you don't want this to be more tolerant. Maybe you want to take longer until you cause an alarm. So maybe you want to leave this at 300, but you want to say, okay, I don't want to already cause an alarm when it's above 20. I want to give it a little bit more time. Maybe you want to change this to 50. Uh, and then we have more frames. So this doesn't cause an alarm yet. This also doesn't cause an alarm, but if I do it for long enough, it's going to cause an alarm. So tweaking that value here is going to allow for longer movement and this is going to allow, allow for more massive movement. So if I increase that number massively, it's going to allow more massive movements. And if I increase that number, it's going to allow for longer movements and uh, those two values then, um, you can tweak those two values to tweak the sensibility of your motion detection alarm system. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.